And what I want to talk about today, a couple things about our board. This is the new EDLA model board. So EDLA, what's that stand for? Enterprise Device License Agreement with Google. So this allows us to access the Google Play Store and load apps from the Google Play Store, that sort of thing. So it is a new option for BenQ, it's a new option for interactive panels. And we are the first group to release this on our panel. We're not using it OPS, we're not using a Chromebox or any external device, everything is on our panel. So the panel we're looking at right now is an RP8604 model panel. You'll notice that I have an option to log in here. I've got a series of buttons to power it on, power it off, go to my home screen. Across the front, I have a sound bar with two 20 watt speakers built into that sound bar. There's a subwoofer there as well. I've also got an eight array microphone built into this sound bar so I can do recordings and we'll pick up my voice as I go. Over here, I have an air ionizer. It'll clean the air out in front of the board for me as a teacher as I'm standing here teaching all day long. It will clear out particulate matter, total volatile organic compounds that releases negative ions, attaches to those particles, pulls them down to the floor out of my breathing area. It won't cover my old classroom, but it will cover the area right in front of the board. I've also got some options here to plug in devices. So I wanna plug in a computer, a laptop, I can do that and have it cast up onto the screen. So real quick, let's talk about logging into the board. As you notice here, we have a little NFC card reader and I have an NFC card in my hand. So I can take my NFC card, scan that over the board and it will log me in. In this case, we're going to be Christian. So as we log in, you'll see that we do have a different background. We do have Christian's name with an avatar there. This is our environmental monitoring system. So here you'll see right in front of us right now, our total volatile organic compounds are up a little bit. Okay? Our particulate matter and our CO2 are down. So if we turned on the air ionizer over a little bit of time, that would have some effect there. So if we look at the board itself as we get logged in, some of the things that are different for BenQ is the fact that we have an entire ecosystem. So when I sign into the board, not only am I signing into the board, I do have an option here to link my Cloud Drive account to my login. So now I'm able to access content, in this case, on my Google Drive, and I can open that from here or use that in other areas uh, in, my, in my board here. I also have an internal folder, so if I save something directly to the board, it'll put it in my folder. Nobody else will get to see that if they log in, so I do have that. If you think about the Windows Active Directory, you know, you log in, it's your account. Somebody can log in after you, they won't see your stuff. And so speaking of stuff, this is called AMS Files. To the text, it stands for Account Management System. For teachers, are y'all techs or teachers? Are you techs or teachers? Both? Okay, so to the text, we tell them it stands for Account Management System. Teachers, we tell them it stands for all my stuff. Right, because I've got to store all my stuff somewhere. Right? And if they store, if I put all my stuff where all my stuff goes, or I log into any board, I'll have access to all my stuff wherever I am. So that's what the things that we talk to teachers about. So this is unique uh, for BenQ. I can sign into any board, have access to my linked cloud content. We do have an option. You'll notice here, auto backup. If I turn that on, then what it will do is create a folder called BenQ Backup. Anything that I save on the board without saving in my cloud drive will be put into that BenQ backup. So as I'm going through my day creating content, I'm just saving it on the board. I forget to load it to my cloud drive. It'll put it on my cloud drive for me. And it's in that backup folder. That's a, a unique feature for us as well. So let's talk a little bit about some of the new features with the Google Play Store. So as you notice here, I have Chrome, I have Google, ClassLink, I have a variety of apps. If I look here, I have the Google Play Store. So this is kind of a double-edged sword for schools. They've been wanting access to Google Play Store to get apps from there, but they don't want to turn their teachers loose on it and just have them go crazy grabbing stuff. So one of the things that you can do that you're able to do is load your board, get it going, and the techs can come in, download the apps on the Play Store that they need for that board, and then sign out of it. If I sign out of the Play Store, I can't get back into it just by tapping and I have to sign in again. I also have an option as the tech 
touch my home button here to turn that off. So we have an entire management system called the DMS, device management system. Within that management system, I can push apps to boards, apps to single board, groups of boards, all the boards. I can also take things away. One of those is to take away the Google Play Store icon so the teachers don't even see it. So they're not tempted to load that. I could also leave it there or restrict it so that they can't log in. So there's an option here to, to restrict login to the Play Store. It's another thing that I can do uh, as we go about through our management system. And again, that's, that's unique to BenQ, it's something that we offer. So with the board itself, so I can, as I said, access my cloud content. Uh, I can just plug a device in. If I look here, I've got a USB-C port, plug my laptop into that, I'll get sight, sound, and power, as well as touch. So I can control everything from the board there. Uh, I also have an option called InstaShare. That is an app that we have on our board. It's right here, let me grab that and just drag it down in the shortcut area. That lets me do screencasting. So if I screencast using my board, what I'll get is full touch control of my device. So I'll open the InstaShare app on my laptop. I'll open the InstaShare app on the board. So I'll say yes. So here, oh, we've got to actually turn on the, this is a one-time thing. So InstaShare, allow that. I also want to allow easy write. I want to allow easy tools. Then to camera. And if you notice before the AMS app was already allowed, we were able to get into that. And I'll come down here, InstaShare 2 is already allowed. And we will allow, that's it for now. So now I'll run InstaShare 2, close this. They don't need to see that anymore. And I'll connect my laptop. You notice here I've got devices that are available to me. This is the A5B4 board. So I'll select that, cast to device. So there's my laptop. From here, I have full touch control. I don't have to be there working with my laptop. So this is the AMS that we talked about a little while ago. So this is where my teachers are loaded. So with security settings, I can insert certificates if the board needs certificates. I'm allowed to, or I can set up the Wi-Fi network, push that out, right, with the password so the boards, the teachers don't have to mess with any of that. I've got other options to push out apps that I might want the boards to use and push those from here. Here. So as we go on, I can also update my firmware from the DMS. I don't have to go to a board, put my hands on it. The identity account management system allows me to bring in my users, so my faculty members. I'll grab those. Ours came in from Google Workspace. So that's where we got all of ours. And I also have Active Directory, SAML, and Classmate as, as options there to integrate. With permissions, I can set up different groups. I don't have any groups here, but when I'd set up a group, I might have a group for faculty, right? I would take a look at setting up the permissions. So I am a administrator. I can set up my, go to personal settings. These are the different settings I have. So faculty just need to be an AMS user. I don't need them accessing all, all the other stuff that they have. Or I could apply a group setting. If there's if there's a group that they're in. Okay. Yeah, like, why are we loaded in the founding lines? Why is the AMS, my account management system, or all my stuff as we call it? Right, that's where I'm gonna link in the cards. So you notice the BinQ cards have a serial number printed on the bottom. Okay. And that serial number is for the NFC card. So here we'll see the different NFC cards attached to a user. 
and then the user takes that and that's what they'll use to swipe into any board that they might want to sign into. What the teachers would see is an option to set their avatar, an option to set their background. We also have a system called Broadcast that lets me send messages to my boards. So once I'm done with that, as you notice here, like I said, I've got full touch control. If I want to annotate over what I have, I have a floating annotation tool here that I can use. So now I'll open that and we'll talk about personal network drives. So I do have options to set bookmarks. So do that, tap that edit button. And then I see I've got some bookmarks that are set here. I could also have the admins could push out a bunch of bookmarks they want the teachers to have and say, okay, there. So that's one way for my laptop to connect as a teacher. I could just simply plug it in. Like I said, if I plug it in with the USB-C port, then I also get power. I can here, if you'll notice up at the top, right now we're looking at my main screen. I do have an option to go extended screen. So a lot of times you know, the teacher wants to present over here and then they've got some email they've got to do or they've got some grading they have to do. So the option there to go with the extended screen. And of course I can just stop that and just stop the whole session, okay? If you look here, I'm still connected, but I'm not doing anything. So I open the app back up on my device. We've been going from here to there. I also have an option to go from there to here, okay? So now I've got that. One of the things that I like about this that's, here we go. I do have options here if I tap that one that gives me the right here to annotate. So maybe I'll come over here. It doesn't work all that well with just a simple laptop. I had an iPad or a Surface, something that's touch-based. I, I can write notes up on here, do things what I want to do with that, or just go ahead and erase them all. But this allows my students in my room, if I've got students that would rather see it on the device in front of them, they're able to do that rather than staring at the board across the room. So. Other options that I have, we'll go back to casting it to the board. So you'll see here's a camera option. Now when I have a handheld, like an iPad or something like that, now what I have is an instant document camera. So I can take this around and then I decide I wanna take the picture. I can also put this in what's called a floating window. So I can have that sitting around here where it is not full screen because I might have other content open here. I might open my whiteboard up. I've got content on my laptop I wanna show. Can make it medium, large, or small. And at any time, I can go back to that full screen mode. The control panel for InstaShare is here. And as you notice right now, every time I connect it, I just connect it. It didn't have to give it myself permission to do that. When I talk with teachers, I highly suggest they turn on this option right here, confirm before device casts. So when I turn that on, we disconnect in that session. So now, when I try to connect my laptop, since that's turned on, I'll touch the cast option, and now it's gonna pop up a message that says allow deny. Okay. I also have a do not disturb option when I turn that on, nobody else can get on. So again, talking to teachers, I'll tell them, if you're the only device that you want up here, you don't want anybody else to connect, tap that Do Not Disturb button and you won't get disturbed by anything. Nobody else can get a connection to your, to your board. With my device here, if I want to go something else quickly, I can just tap that eye. Might kind of poke myself in the eye there. That takes that away. I can come back and just tap it again. It'll bring it back up at any time. So that's InstaShare in a, in a quick nutshell. Disconnect real quick here. There we go. So in addition to all of that, but like it's not that amazing the next thing we look at is our whiteboard system. And this is where a, a lot of things go on here in our whiteboard. So a couple of things with my settings in my whiteboard I tend to turn off the auto save notice. And when I do that, a lot of teachers use Google Workspace. You guys Google school? Okay, Google. 
All right, so when you create a slide in Google or a doc in school, you ever have to hit a save button? It just saves it for you. And same thing here. So I'll turn that off so I don't have to save anything purposefully. Handwriting recognition. I'm gonna be able to convert my handwriting to English or French or German, whatever language I choose, okay? So that downloads. Shape recognition, we'll download that real quick so that I can convert basic shapes. I also have Google Translate. So I'll go from English. Here we'll grab Spanish. And that's a big deal in Texas especially. So now I've got Google Translate set up. And these are things I only have to do one time. So the first time I, I run Easy Write, I do these things. And there are 88 languages, I think, available, if not more. BinQ, uh, real quick, is sold all over the world, not just in the United States. It's an international corporation. So now I, I pick up my pen. As you look at the icons, I tell teachers that the BinQ system is a PhD system. Push here dummy, right? It's icon based. You can use your phone, you can use this. So I've got my pen tool selected. From here, I'll, I'll close out of that option and I'll just write a word, hello. Everything that I put on a BinQ whiteboard is an object that I can move and manipulate, even my handwriting. Do you remember we set it up to translate to English? We set Google Translate up to go. Okay. Now, if I wanna go back to English, one of the So if I long press my Google Translate option, it takes me back there. I can quickly switch my settings. Okay. And now we'll translate that. Hi there. Text to speech. That works really well with second language learners as we go. Every item here has properties that I can manipulate and change. Into a race. My pens, you'll notice, have two different tips on them, skinny tip and a blunt tip. I've got a dual pen option. So I'll take the skinny tip with that color, the in the dual pen mode, go back to single pen. So as you write here, I you know you've seen I can erase with the palm of my hand. I also have an eraser. So the first option is just gonna give me the, like the back of a pencil. This one will clear everything, just clears the whole board. I can always just go back if I made a mistake. This one's kind of interesting because it lets me get rid of specific content. This big fat line here, if I erase it with my palm, I'm gonna erase a bunch of other stuff. All you gotta do is just cross it and it goes away. So from a teaching standpoint, that's pretty helpful. Text fields, where a lot of the magic happens though is right here. If I had, I do have. So let's see if our webcam is going to work today. Tap is the ice tea, but down. If that's what's the inner. Help, we've had some issues with that camera lately. When I used to teach, I taught over 20 years, every grade except pre-K, fourth and fifth. When I turned my back on high school kids, I opened my, my webcam, right? And now I've literally got eyes in the back of my head. I heard the noise, I take the picture. This allows me here, right? Remember I'm connected to my cloud drive. So I'm looking for images. Don't think I have any there. And that's why nothing's showing up. If I come here and look for documents, if you look in here, here we go. Here's a simple PowerPoint presentation. So this allows me to open up my PowerPoint presentation, bring it into my whiteboard, annotate over it, resize it, keep it, do things with it. So right now as teachers write on their laptop, on their projector or something like that, there's really no way to maintain all that content. So this is going to open up 34 pages of a PowerPoint presentation. If I don't want them all, I don't have to get them all. I can grab just the pages that I want. Okay, that imports those pages into my light bulb. So now I have my options to take, make whatever notes I wanna make. Or if I wanna come in and highlight some text, we'll talk about the eraser here. This all stays with it. But I can just simply go to the next page. Off I go, if I go back, all my annotations are still there. 
Okay. I also have an option. This is taking up the whole screen. So I can take my object tool. When this page came in, it came in locked in place. So I'm going to long press here, unlock it. Now I can resize it, move it over there. And now I have room for my notes and annotations here, right? So we'll get rid of that and go back to the actual pen. Then, so now I've got room to write, there we go, to write here and have more, more room to work. Then, if I bring in any kind of a document, like I brought this one, let's go over to this page. We'll take this one, we'll unlock it. We'll shrink it up a little bit. Now, if I make notes on this, Remember I said everything I put on the board's an object? So if I grab this now and move it, those notes don't stay. But everything's an object. Objects have properties. Why don't I just group all that together? Okay, and now everything sticks and rotates. I want to rotate it there like that. So a lot of options for me here. I can look at my page sorter, see the pages that I have. Maybe I want to take this page, move it up there. Yeah. Remember I said earlier that I set up the autosave function? So I just close the lesson. I come back to the easy write, tap my little hamburger menu. This is the folder where everything is stored. There's the lesson we just had up. As a classroom teacher teaching rotating sections, I'm teaching algebra one. I've got six sections that come in every day. So I'm going to open my lesson. I can create this content ahead of time. Open my lesson, first period, off we go. Close it, go back, open the original template, second period. You with me? So I have my six periods. When I'm done, at the end of the day, I'll come over here, rename this. Maybe I'll just call it period one. They come in tomorrow, I open that file. I have period two, period three, period four. Just pick up where I left off. So gone is that question of, did we get through problem 37 yesterday or 25? I can't remember. So I just pick up exactly where I left off. I've also got an option to save it as an easy write file on my cloud drive. And the reason I want to do that, I can sign into any board. I have access to all my stuff. If I put all my stuff where all my stuff goes, I come in to teach tomorrow. My room had a pipe burst in the ceiling. I can't teach in my room on that board. I've got to go over there. If I've saved my content on my cloud drive, I go right over there to whatever room I'm going to sign in. I pick up right where I left off. This is a lesson I did for first grade kids. When I taught first grade, we counted money. We had to have a bag of coins, right? Little plastic coins. What grade do you teach? Librarian. Oh, librarian. Okay. Pre-K. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, right. If I want my students to show me 27 cents right now, they're, they're getting the coins out and they just hold it up. Here's my quarter, here's my two pennies. Kids today are, are not quite born with, but very soon after have touch devices in their hands. They know how to, how to do this. And they'll come up, they'll grab that quarter, move it over. They'll grab those two pennies, move them over. There's my 27 cents, right? And I can reset this. We give them the golf clap while they sit down. I say, somebody do this without using a quarter. Now they've got to rethink, come back up and do this. So the ability to create content ahead of time, bring it into my class, something simple like that. I've also got a simple lesson here, probably targeted at fourth grade, area and perimeter, maybe fifth. So this little PDF document that I brought in, okay, that's a little uh, screen capture. If you look at the next page, okay, this is what's the area of the square. Well. I'm going to need a ruler to figure that out. I've got the tools to do that. Coming back over here, if you'll notice, I've got a couple little hyperlinks right there. One here, there, there, and there. Every object, like I said, has properties. One of them is to put a hyperlink in. So this hyperlink here, for example, goes out to YouTube. Okay. And what's one of the problems that everybody has with YouTube? This right? All the ads. And I, I don't want to mess with the ads, right? So what I'm going to do today, I'll just touch that share button and I'll touch that more option. Then I'll come over here to easy, right? 
it just drops the video in my whiteboard. So we let's close that now. I can make this as small as I need it to be, hide it over there when I'm ready to play it. I'll just give that a little double tap. And now my video clip. Where's my ad? Gone. Where's all the other content that was over here? What's coming next? It's all gone. So all those distractions to students have been stripped out. And when I'm done with this video, I mean, I can pause it. I can also just tap that and off I go. So I have the ability now to embed YouTube options right into my whiteboard. What I used to do, because I taught with a whiteboard in my room. And before I had my whiteboard, I had my laptop and I've got bookmarks, I've got a folder with documents and I've got some video links over there. And that's kind of what I would do and hand out PDFs every now and then. It dawned on me, if I put all that in my whiteboard, now this is a launching pad for everything that I do. Right? I've got my PDF doc. We can talk about that. If I want the students to have one, I can hand it out. I have my links out to my content. Uh, I can just very simply drop a hyperlink in here. So, right, if I need to go off to this web page, it's there for me. And all I have to do is just tap that. Oops. Normally, all I have to do is tap that, and it'll open my browser. Right, then I can come right back in. So if you remember earlier, it opened the, the, the browser, right? So I can put everything in here, keep all my notes, all my annotations, it's all there for me. I, I can come back tomorrow, just come back the next day. 